Did I just... Let's go! Let's go! Finally! Let's go, bruh. I finally got Dark Ether. Yo guys, welcome back to another video. So recently I got the Dark Ether camo and I wanted to make a video talking about it. And I want to give you tips on how you can get the camo for yourself. So Dark Ether honestly wasn't even that hard. I mean, when I first started, I was really bad at zombies. But over time I got a lot better. So Dark Ether got pretty easy. And remember, this is Dark Ether, not Dark Matter. So don't come here expecting me to go over dark matter. I'm only doing dark ether. But anyway, let's get into the video. So as you should know, there are nine or 10 classes in the game. Assault rifles, which I'll refer to as ARs. So machine guns, which I'll say SMGs. Light machine guns, which are LMGs. Sniper rifles, tactical rifles, shotguns, pistols, melee, launchers, and specials. For Dark Ether and Matter, melees and specials are counted as one class, so technically there's only 9 classes. ARs and SMGs have 5 core weapons, attack rifles have 4 core weapons, LMGs, pistols, and snipers have 3 core weapons, and shotguns, launchers, and melee slash specials have 2 core weapons. There are also 3 mastery camos, Golden Viper, Plague Diamond, and of course, Dark Ether. Shotguns are the easiest class to get diamond on since they're very strong, but they're annoying for headshots because of their pellet spread. ARs, SMGs, LMGs, pistols, and TAC rifles have the same difficulty in my opinion due to them all being similar in style, which they aren't that hard, just tedious due to the amount of weapons that you need to get gold on. For me, launchers were also pretty easy. They're great for AoE and crowd control, and overall I only finished them in less than a day. I mean. It took me two days, but if you just count all the hours of me actually playing the game, it was less than a day. And then I passively finished the melees, aka the knife. So I can't really say if they were hard or not, but I can say that the last category was annoying since you have to get close up with the melee and you're gonna most likely take damage. I'll get into what that challenge is when I get to that part of the video. Specials were easy because I ignored the M79 which is the little grenade launcher, it's the worst weapon in zombies in my opinion, and use the R1 Shadow Hunter crossbow instead. It's so much better than the M79, so I had fun with that. And then snipers were the hardest class since I'm not very good at sniping, which isn't much of a problem in zombies, but it was painful leveling them up in multiplayer, especially the M82, which is the second worst weapon in zombies in my opinion, by far the worst sniper in the game. I've never had so much issues trying to level up one weapon before. I recommend camping up in the penthouse and D-Machine because rounds go by faster, their one defense is up there so you can easily get your perks back if you're down, you can just aim for the head to do your critical kills. But if you're dying a lot up there, I recommend staying in spawn after turning on the power of course. It's bigger and very effective, it's just that the rounds will, will cycle slower. I don't recommend Firebase because of the orders that'll spawn during every assault wave after round 30, so it'll just slow you down and just waste your ammo. For launchers, I recommend staying in the village in Firebase until either round 26 and you exfil, or take the risk and hope that round 30 is an assault wave or else you're gonna have to fight the order before you go exfil. For snipers, I recommend staying in Firebase until you have your elite kills done and then either die or exfil because Firebase isn't very sniper friendly. And then once you're done with that, just go play D Machine until you get Golden Viper. And then if you do use the M79, I'm honestly not sure how to go about that trash. As I said, I didn't use it, so you'd have to go to a different video for the M79. So if you want to just watch only one video, just do the crossbow. Don't do the M79. It's way better. I forgot to mention what level you should get your primaries to before you start playing zombies. So level up your weapon to at least level 40 in multiplayer, and then do every single category except for kills, pack punch kills, and critical kills, and then obviously you won't be able to do the last category. So just do all those, and then go ahead and 
go back to multiplayer to get your thing to 50 or you could just keep playing zombies whatever you want and then you could just play zombies for the rest until you get golden viper anyway let's get into the next category the only annoying part about dark ether is leveling up your weapon since it takes a ridiculously long time to level up and on top of that you have to play multiplayer for good leveling but the multiplayer in this game is pretty annoying so it gets pretty problematic unless you're very good at multiplayer but I'll give you a few tips to help you with the slow leveling. So the best way that I found was to play hardcore Nuketown 24-7. With you being able to one shot most of the time and Nuketown having very fast spawns and just being an overall small map, it's the perfect game mode, especially with double weapon XP. I got the AUG from level 16 to level 40 in only an hour and a half using this method. During double weapon XP though, I probably would have get to like maybe 30 without it maybe 25 i have no idea i just don't know it's also less annoying than core at least in my opinion because you're meant to die but it would just get annoying whenever i would just get spawn killed or killed by some camper but other than that hardcore is a lot more fun than regular core for me but for weapons like snipers i recommend doing snipers only or kingslayer in warzone I only recommend snipers only because you can't get overpowered by SMGs and stuff, but you can still get meleeed, which ticked me off a lot. But Kingslayer in Warzone is very laid back, you can just respawn easily. You may still be able to get overpowered by auto guns and whatnot, but you can catch people off guard due to you dropping above their head after respawning. You can also use this for other weapons too, that's what I did when I was using the assault rifles, and it was super fun. Another reason why Warzone in general is good is that you could just gain XP just by holding your weapon. So XP is pretty easy to get, especially if you get kills with that weapon, and you also get a precise number of XP that you need instead of just a bar that fills up. The only downside to Kingslayer though is that it's an LTM, so it's, which means it's a limited time mode, so it's not gonna be here all the time, so you still may need to play multiplayer. For secondaries though, you can just level those up in zombies itself. You only need 35 levels, and it seems like you need less XP in general as well. So I recommend just playing zombies for secondaries. You can also just play like one or two matches of hardcore Nuketown, depending on if you have double weapon XP. You can just get like 10 free levels out of that, and then play zombies. On top of playing zombies level, you can get free camo progress, making your grind less strenuous since you're multitasking. I've heard that Fireteam is good, but I'm not that big of a fan of Fireteam, so I haven't seen the XP rates myself. And I've also heard that completing the first Outbreak objective and X filling is good, at least for snipers, but it's pretty boring to do that, for me at least. And you may need to pack your weapon, just in case it's too weak, which takes longer because the point rate is lower than normal zombies. So in summary, Hardcore Nuketown 24-7 and Warzone's King Slayer are the best ways to level up your weapon in my opinion. If you have other ways, let me know in the comments. But let's get into the next category. So let's talk about the order of how you should do it. If I'm being honest, order all comes down to preference. It doesn't matter which order you do. Like there's no specific order that I would recommend. I just recommend going at your own pace. I personally went for shotguns, LMGs, SMGs, ARs, pistols, melee and specials, but I only did the melee portion because I was waiting for the crossbow. So I just did the knife, just finished it off since I was really close. Launchers, melee specials again, but this time the crossbow was out, so I did the crossbow. And it's a special, so I did specials only. And then tactical rifles and snipers. You can get the annoying ones out of the way first, like snipers, or you can do the best stuff first, like shotguns. But like I said, just do Dark Ether at your own pace, don't burn yourself out, take breaks when it's necessary, and do whatever class you want, but PLEASE don't focus on multiple classes at once, that's how you're gonna screw yourself over and stress yourself out. Let's get into the camos, which goes from grunge all the way to infection. So that's grunge, liquid, brushstroke, vintage, fauna, topography, and then infection. Certain camos can be annoying as well, but I'm gonna give you tips on how to overcome all these challenges. 
including all the different ones like melees and launchers how they have different challenges instead of like i don't know get critical kills so let's start off with grunge so first off at level one you have to get 2500 kills and this goes for every weapon except for melees which you need 754 and then launchers and specials which you need 1500 for both of those classes these will come naturally so don't worry about this the camels that you will get are the stroke camel at 50 kills, glacier at 250 or 125 kills depending on the weapon, grudge at 750 or 500, bloodshed at 1500, 500 or 1000, and then rotten at 2500, 750 and 1500. Then we have liquid. For ARs, SMGs, TAC rifles, snipers, shotguns and pistols, the next category is 2500 critical kills which is unlocked at level 5 for every for, for primaries and secondaries. I recommend using the Deadshot Dakiri perk because it locks onto the head and increases headshot damage. And if you play on controller, you can also spam your ADS button so you can easily lock on. If you played Fortnite back in like season 7 or so, you know the ADS spamming existed. So it's the same thing here except that they're probably not going to just remove that. And then I recommend using the Cryo Freeze ammo mod since it's the only ammo mod that cannot steal kills and it slows enemies down to also make it easier to hit the head. For melees though, instead of getting critical kills, you need to get 50 kills against enemies that are disoriented by stun grenades, decoys, or monkey bombs. This is self explanatory, but I do recommend using Dead Wire or Shatter Blast to get the extra kills since you're not gonna get too many just by swinging at enemies, it's just gonna be very slow. For the launchers and the M79, you need to get two or more kills rapidly 50 times. This is very easy, all I need to do is just get a crowd of zombies and just fire a few shots into it, and then use Dead Wire or Shadow Blast, Shatter Blast for this as well. For the crossbow, you need to get three or more critical kills rapidly 50 times. This is easy as well, just use the same strategy that I mentioned for critical kills in general. The camos that you will get for this category are Wasteland at 50 critical kills, 10 disoriented kills, 2 rapids, 2 rapid kills 10 times, or 3 critical rapid kills 10 times, Amphibian at 250 criticals, 20 disoriented kills, 2 rapids 20 times, or 3 crit rapids 20 times, Boundary at 750 crits, 30 disorient disoriented kills, 2 rapids 30 times, or 3 crit rapids 30 times. Threshold at 1500 critical kills, 40 disoriented kills, 2 rapids 40 times, or 3 crit rapids 40 times. And banished at 2500 crits, 50 disorients, 2 rapids 50 times, and 3 crit rapids 50 times. This is going to be the slowest one for crit kills because you gotta aim for the head. If you don't aim for the head, you're just going to get these slower. So, this is probably going to be either your last or second to last, depending on if you play enough zombies before you get the gun to level 50 for the last set of camos. So, yeah. Next, we have Brushstroke. At level 10, for ARs, SMGs, attack rifles, snipers, shotguns, and pistols, which I refer to now as just rifles. You need to get 2500 kills while the weapon is pack a punch. For melees, you need to get 750 kills while the weapon is pack a punch, though. This is the same as regular kills, so don't worry about this. All you need to do is just pack a punch a weapon and just kill enemies. And also, ammo mods do count towards pack a punch kills, so just like for regular kills, use Dead Wire or Shatter Blast. They're both very good for getting kills. For launchers and the M79, you need to kill 5 or more enemies with a single shot 50 times. You can use the same strategy that I mentioned for the rapid kills for this challenge. And for the crossbow you need to kill 3 or more enemies with a single shot 50 times. The easiest way to do this is to use dead wire or shatter blast. Ammo mods surprisingly work for this, so please use them because without them, this challenge is pretty annoying cause you gotta pierce through enemies. The camels that you will get for this are extortion at 50 pap kills. And when I say pap, I mean pack a punch. And then three or five kills with a single shot ten times. 
3 for the crossbow, 5 for launchers. Degeneration at 250 or 125 pap kills, and then 3 or 5 kills with a single shot 20 times. Downfall at 750 or 500 pap kills, and then 3 or 5 kills with a single shot 30 times. Drench at 1500 or 500 pap kills, or 3 or 5 kills with a single shot and chemical at 2500 pap kills or 750 and 3 or 5 kills with a single shot 50 times. After that we have vintage at level 20 for primaries and level 15 for secondaries and only for the rifles need to get 15 kills against elites, bosses or specials which bosses give you 3 kills but I don't recommend waiting for bosses that'll just waste your time. But I do recommend playing Firebase Z since Mimics and Manglers spawn constantly as opposed to D-Machine where Megatons only spawn every once in a while. And no, splitting is not a kill, neither is the first bomber or blaster, only the second one counts. I thought that all three forms counted as kills but they don't. I tried that out earlier, it didn't work, only the second one did. So just play Firebase, it's better. For melees, you need to get 15 kills while you either have Ring of Fire or Aether Shroud active or against enemies that are affected by Frost Blast. I recommend either doing e Ring of Fire or Aether Shroud for this and not Frost Blast. Aether Shroud is good if you want to be safe and Ring of Fire is good if you want more damage at the cost of less safety. For launches and specials, you need to get 1500 kills while the weapon is Pack-a-Punched. Use the same strategy as the other PAP challenges to do this one. And then the camels you will get are Decadence at 3 elites slash ring of fire kills or 50 pap kills. And when I literally just say ring of fire kills, I just mean that it's the same amount as the elites. It's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Bravado at 6 elites and ring of fire kills 200 or 250 pap kills. Funkadelic at 9 elites or ring of fire kills or 500 pap kills. Boutique at 12 elites or ring of fire kills and 1000 pap kills and Maniac at 15 elites or ring of fire kills or 1500 pap kills. After this we have Fauna. At level 30 for primaries and level 20 for secondaries and only for the rifles, you need to get 2 or more kills rapidly 10 times. This is similar to the version of this for launches and stuff, just a lower amount. So just spray into a crowd and or use dead wire or shatter blast. For melees, specials, and launchers, you need to get kills against specials, elites, or bosses. Again, just go to firebase and kill mimics and manglers. The camels that you will get for this are growl at 2 rapids 2 times, or 2 elites, scavenger at 2 rapids 4 times, or 4 elites, zebra at 2 rapids 6 times, or 6 elites, blue tiger at 2 rapids 8 times, or 8 elites, and rising tiger at 2 rapids 10 times, or 10 elites. After Fauna, we have Topography, which at level 25 for secondaries and level 40 for primaries and only for rifles, you need to get 3 or more critical kills rapidly 25 times. Just aim for the head for this one, this is very easy and self explanatory. For melees, launchers and specials, you need to get 10 kills rapidly 10 times. If you already did the 2 rapid kills 50 times, this is super easy. It's the same thing, just more kills fewer times. I don't need to explain this one. The camels that you will get are Acidic at 3 crits 5 times or 10 rapids 10 times, Gunrunner at 3 crits 10 times or 10 rapids 4 times, Forecast at 3 crits 15 times or 10 rapids 6 times, Cartographer at 3 crits 20 times or 10 rapids 8 times, and Sundu at 3 crits 25 times or 10 rapids 10 times. And finally, at level 30 for secondaries and level 50 for primaries, and for every single weapon, you need to get 20 consecutive kills without taking damage 10 times, also known as getting jackrabbit medals using only that certain weapon. This sounds annoying on paper, but I recently realized that you can use ammo mods for this, so I recommend getting, gathering a train of zombies and then triggering dead wire or shatter blast and just stay away from zombies so that you don't take damage. If you have uh, megaton spawns, I recommend either skipping that round or killing it as quickly as possible because it's near impossible for a megaton not to deal damage to you. The camels that you get are corrosion at 2 jackrabbits, entropy at 4 jackrabbits, contamination at 6 jackrabbits, glitch at 8 jackrabbits, and conviction at 10 jackrabbits. And that's all the camels. 
I also recommend skipping certain core weapons and to use DLC weapons instead. These weapons, as of recording this audio, consist of the Farah 83, the Groza, and both of those are assault rifles, the MAC-10 and the LC-10, which are both SMGs, the ZRG 20mm, which is a sniper, it's not released as the date of me recording this audio, the Street Sweeper, which is a shotgun, Machete, Wakizashi, Sledgehammer, and the E-Tool, which are all melees, and the R1 Shadow Hunter, which is the crossbow that I keep mentioning, and that's a special. I don't recommend skipping the knife for any of these melees, unless you want to do at least maybe the Wakizashi just because it looks cooler, but the knife is good on its own. I recommend skipping the M79 for the crossbow like I said earlier, because the M79 is terrible. I recommend skipping the M82 for the ZRG, only because the M82 sucks in multiplayer. It's not that bad in zombies, but if you really just don't want to suffer in multiplayer, please skip it. I was going to use the ZRG instead of the M82, but it didn't come out with Season 2 Reloaded, it's coming out next week, so... And then I recommend at least skipping the KSP-45 for either the LC-10 or the MAC-10. The weapon isn't that good, so yeah. And then I would say to skip the Milano as well, but it recently got a buff, so I'm not sure if it still sucks in zombies or not. I recommend skipping the FFAR for either the Farah or the Groza because the FFAR runs through ammo way too fast. I do not recommend skipping anything for the Street Sweeper because the Howard and Gallo are already the best weapons in the game, but you can skip over one if you like the Street Sweeper more, which I'd recommend skipping the Gallo for since the Howard is better. And that's Dark Ether. I'm sorry if this video is really long, I had a lot of tips to share. I got a lot of these from my friend Rodolfo and then a YouTuber named Samuel the 17th and then various other YouTubers, but Samuel the 17th and Rodolfo helped me the most. I'll link Sam's channel in the description, he's very underrated and he's a great zombies player. If you're only here for the tips, you can click off, but for people who are subscribed or just interested in my next content, now that Dark Ether is done, I'll return to my Minecraft series. I'll finish off Sidewaves and Jump Dash, and I'll return to Warframe. I know I said that I had a video planned for Warframe, I just never got around to making it. So don't worry, I will make that video soon. I'm also going to try streaming on Twitch to see if that will help me more than YouTube streaming. I may hate Twitch's rules, but it is easier to stream there, so I want to give that a try. I'm not going to stop the Cold War content though. I'm gonna do around 100 streams every so often and do challenges as well because I enjoy this game a lot and I already have an idea for a challenge. I'm not going to say what it is yet, but you'll see soon. I don't know how soon, but we'll just have to see when I do that. And I enjoy this game a lot, so I want you guys to enjoy the content that I'm going to make on it as well. And if you don't, you don't have to watch the Cold War content. I'm not sure if I'll make Warzone content, but I'll know for sure I'll do Cold War Zombies content and then maybe multiplayer here and there since I'll also be trying to focus on getting better at that. But anyway, I'll leave this off here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. I'm trying to hit 1000 subscribers by the end of 2021, so I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and share this video with anybody that you know is getting Dark Ether. I want to help people with this and let me know in the comments if this helped you or not. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all next time. Peace out, guys.